大家好, I'm Nathan Rich, aka Huoguodawang. I want to clear the air about this whole train war thing. There's a lot of opinions flying around and I want to contribute mine. Maybe the entire thing has been blown out of proportion. But what if it's actually understated? We might be looking at just another squabble between political elites with little or no impact to real humans. But what if we're looking at something much more serious? I'm an American and I love America. I love the music, a lot of the people, and some of the great scenes. I love the principles it was founded on for the most part, and I really want it to do better and better. But unlike many people in America who don't understand China, I do understand it and I love it. Of the roughly 35 countries I've been to, I probably have four top favorites, and America and China are two of them. That puts me in kind of a weird situation because the political right in America has its reasons to hate on China, and the political left has its reasons. I've been thinking about doing a video explaining that part as well, so comment to me if you want to know why the right hates on China sometimes, and separately, why the left does. Anyway, so who started this whole trade war thing, and what's the real background we need to be aware of? In 1974, during a period when China was opening up to the world, America signed a trade agreement with China. Not only was it not a forced treaty, both sides were happy with the results for decades. The Trade Act of 1974, which I'm signing into law today, will determine for many, many years American trade relations with the rest of the world. China has its own policy on how to deal with foreign companies. It used to have no foreign companies, then it had some, and then it had many. But it's always been relatively tight on how these companies operate. The main push for these regulations is not to steal technology, as Western propaganda often says, but actually to protect Chinese people and businesses. Actually, most countries do this. Believe it or not, there are some countries in the world which actually value mom and pop stores. There are some places that don't want 100% of all shopping to be done in five store brands. There's a lot more to say here, but long story short, there are restrictions on how companies run here in China, which have generally gotten a, a lot more lax since 1974. They have nothing specifically to do with the United States, it's all countries. Again, they are about protecting China, not punishing other countries. In 2016, Trump ran on many ideas, from building a wall to protect against immigrants, to punishing China for these policies. After all, if America is open for business, China needs to be as well in the same way. He described his mindset as a reaction against globalism. Ironically, he didn't seem to notice that forcing other countries to open their trade in specific ways is literally globalism in every worst sense of the word. It's a dismissal of the national sovereignty of the nation in favor of merely a trade hub status in a new global market. In fact, it's the part of globalism that Republicans most oppose, supposedly. So here's when the trade war actually started. January 22nd, 2018, when Trump suddenly put a 30% tariff on solar panels coming from China. Good thinking, we need as little progress into solar power as possible. There was no negotiation or agreement, just a sudden imposition. Then it was a 20% tariff on washing machines from China. Again, this was not part of any agreement. Then everything ramped up in March 2018 with massive increases on tariffs on over 1,300 categories of products from China. It's at this point that China actually started to impose its own tariffs in response. Just remember that. By the time China did anything back, America had already suddenly tariffed China on solar panels, washing machines, aircraft parts, batteries, TVs, medical devices, weapons, satellites, and much, much more. So don't let anyone try to convince you that this was somehow provoked by China. Now, whether this trade war is a good thing or not is actually not really my primary concern because it depends on what point of view you take. What I want people to do is be clear on what's actually happening, that's all. I'm not even necessarily saying that Trump or America can't or shouldn't pursue trade negotiations. What I'm saying is suddenly starting a trade war to enforce what might be viewed as unfair treaties on China is not the way to do it. Okay, let's back up. I want to give you some context here on why China specifically is not the place you want to be coming in to twist arms to get an unfair trade advantage. I've been working on a documentary about the modern history of China, that is from the 1800s onward. There are so many details and fascinating events that it's really going to be great to talk about all of them. If you want to help me with that project, you can do so by sharing these videos to people who haven't been exposed to them yet. The point for me is not to get people to agree with me, but just to hear what I have to say and be more informed. 
tell your colleagues and friends to check out my videos, not as a way to change their minds, but just as more information. That's the most meaningful contribution to me. So I'm just gonna run through some modern China events in a very quick way. Apologies if you already know this stuff, but most Westerners are a bit unclear. Britain had a trading company called the British East India Trade Company. Back in the 1800s, it was extremely powerful with warships and soldiers. Anyway, Britain was trading with China for tea and other products, but it was spending all its silver. At the time, and this is a key point, China was the richest country in the world and was only allowing foreign trade through a single port. In other words, it was trading based on its own laws, not on any perceived international debt or globalization. Anyway, basically what happened is imperial capitalism collided with this limitation and Britain attacked China. Not with tariffs in a trade war, this was actual war. If you want to know the fascinating details of all this stuff, you're going to need to wait for my upcoming documentary. But long story short, Western colonialism and capitalism were primary forces that slowly dethroned China from the richest country in the world. In a matter of decades, China was crushed down to such a state that the world literally thought it would be completely dissolved. They forced treaties on China again and again and again. Each one reduced its power and prestige. Extreme humiliation, death, and destruction spread throughout the country as rebellion after rebellion tore the last dynasty apart. But here's the point. If you think that China is going to submit to forced Western treaties again, you're just laying your ignorance out for all to bear. Of all the things you could think about the Chinese government, them accepting forced treaties from Western powers is the dumbest. They would never, ever do that. And if you don't believe that, you just don't understand the politics of China. And that's fine, but know this. If China views the agreements are forced or particularly unfair, it will not sign them. And I hope from this whole trade war thing that both sides can negotiate and find a suitable resolution. We really have enough problems in the world already. We don't need to add a distracting trade war to them. And that's exactly what China has been trying to do this entire time. Ever since Trump randomly started this trade war, China has been trying to negotiate. That's why it seems so odd to me when Trish Regan's guest, Mr. Pillsbury, said that CGTN's Liu Xin was willing to concede that there's room for these negotiations. What a weird thing to say about the country which has been pushing for negotiations the entire time. But, and this is a key point, Remember when Trish asked about state-run capitalism? How do you define state capitalism? Uh. This is something that people in America seem so confused about. Yes, people, just imagine a situation where capitalism was controlled by the state. That would be so strange, wouldn't it? America would never do that. Companies in America are buying products from China because they are the best deal. And the US government is now imposing tariffs on those products to make them artificially a worse deal. In other words, the state is controlling the direction of capitalism. No, 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 that's impossible. America doesn't do that, right, Trish? When a company goes into business here in China, it understands completely what the situation is. Also, there are plenty of ways to protect intellectual property. While no country is perfect in this regard, I can tell you that companies here have no problems suing other companies for IP infringement. It happens all the time, just like in America. This whole idea that companies are somehow victims of an unfair disadvantage in China is literally the most anti-capitalist message possible. Trump is claiming that America must trade with China when in fact companies are free to go wherever the market takes them. They decide if they want to do trade with China under the conditions of the Chinese laws. It's really not that complicated. I think the real issue here isn't IP theft, but actually that elements of the West want China to totally open to foreign companies. And that situation has been one of the biggest fears I have since I came to China. Here you can still go to a coffee shop that isn't a corporation. You can buy food from a restaurant owned by a family. You can buy brands that are local. You can get your fruit from local farmers. But all of that will be gone if the corporations come in. China will become more and more of a plain Western style country. And that's the real thing I'm afraid of. A total loss of China's fascinating and wonderful culture. And yes, that includes the 100 years of humiliation. China would do well to avoid another humiliating century. Thanks everyone. Xie xie.